Hello everybody. Hello YouTube. Hello art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M. And I'm back with yet another video. Uh, I want to welcome you back if you're a return viewer. And uh, as always, I start my videos out at my homepage just so that you know you're in the right place. Now, uh, what is it that I want to talk about today? I'll just get right to it. I'll just get right to it. Uh, the video before the last one I did. This is this is the one I did the last time. Yeah, actually, yesterday. My Monsters and Aesthetics video. And the video I did before that is Art Talk, Scooby-Doo, and Wax Fruit. And in that video... <clears throat> This is, this is it. I've opened it up. And this is the thing that inspired that video. Um, the, the Instagram post that inspired my video. People, whether they're serious or not in this Instagram post, it doesn't even matter whether or not they're serious about comparing uh, ancient Greek mug or figure or whatever that is in the shape of a dog's head to a Scooby-Doo mug and questioning whether or not people will think uh, thousands of years from now that we worship Scooby-Doo. You know, this is very funny. This is very cute. It's a cute joke. And that's why it's effective. Because it's a joke. So many, so many things said in the guise of a joke are actually what people really would like to say when they're trying not to joke, when they're being serious. But you can't say things just flat out. You can't say things just plainly. Not in the world as it is. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. But, you know, I don't know if Ruffy and Gruff is serious about this, but he might as well be. Whether or not he is, it, it, it it's just as effective. So... In this video, I talked about, you know, what what is going on? What is going on with regard to worship and art and, um, you know, does it make any sense? And I, I did mention wax fruit, all right, and how now and I found a couple of articles in this video from one from the New York Times and one from another source about how fake food as a decoration is making a comeback and you know those of us who are old enough to remember we remember back to a time when fake fruit was not making a comeback it was like the thing or it was on its way out during the time when people my age or roughly my age when we were young grr mm -hmm, um, fake fruit, wax wax fruit, fake food decorations were on their way out. Or you only saw them, you know, in stores to demonstrate stuff or, <clears throat> you know, in a restaurant, like, you know, windows or whatever to display what the food looks like when they serve it to you or whatever. Um, but wax fruit, as a decoration or any kind of fake food it doesn't have to be just fruit it can be gosh maybe like my favorite example is donuts I don't know why but my favorite example is just a big fake donut or a fake cake or there's another fake item it's not edible whether it's fake or not it's not edible but flowers silk flowers those have been around for a while I don't know if they ever went out of style but you know, they're meant for decoration. And they're not real flowers. They don't wilt. They don't dry up. They just look new. As long as, I guess, you dust them or whatever. They look new forever and ever and ever. And I got to thinking, you know, to me, I wouldn't be talking about this if it didn't intrigue me. Do I believe it's a serious issue? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> Yes and no. Um, no in the sense that, yeah, it's kind of a joke. But yes, in the sense that I believe there's something more going on that could or should be explored 
again, uh, mentally or academically or psychologically or culturally or whatever. There's so many different angles that you can look at this issue. Um, and then I, then as I was talking about it, I think I mentioned it in my Monsters video, that I will be doing a follow-up to this. And this is the follow-up to the Scooby-Doo and Wax Fruit video. I guess I'll put part two or follow up or whatever in the title for this video. This this is what I thought of when I thought about it for a little bit longer. The and I hope I don't mangle this pronunciation, but tromploi. Okay. What does it mean? You've maybe seen this term wherever you've seen it. Um what does it mean? It means it's French for deceive the eye. All right. Uh, it is an art technique that uses realistic imagery to create the optical illusion that the depicted objects exist in three dimensions. Okay. It says forced perspective is a com comparable illusion in architecture, but we're not here to talk about that today. I'm just talking about this. Tomploi, uh, the history in painting. All right. And they even, look, look, this is a still life from Pompeii, A.D. 70. All right. It's like they knew I was, I was on my way. Uh, history and painting, the phrase, which can also be spelled without the hyphen and ligature in English as tromploi, uh, originates with the artist Louis, Louis Leopold Boyi who used it as the title of a painting he exhibited in the Paris Salon of 1800. Although the term gained currency only in the early 19th century, the illusionistic technique associated with trompe-l'oeil dates much further back. It was and is often employed in murals. Instances from Greek and Roman times are known, for instance, in Pompeii, as they showed you right here, a typical trompe-l'oeil mural might depict a window, door, or hallway intended to suggest a larger room. A version of an oft-told ancient Greek story concerns a contest between two renowned painters. Zeusis, uh, born around 464 BC, produced a still-life painting so convincing that birds flew down to peck at the painted grapes. A rival, Parasius, asked Zeusius to judge one of his paintings that was behind a pair of tattered curtains in his study. Parasius asked Zeusius to pull back the curtains, but when Zeusius tried, he could not, as the curtains were included in Parasius' painting, making Parasius the winner. Well, isn't that a cute little story? Anyway. Whether or not it's true, I don't know, but... Okay, I'm back. Had a little interruption, but here I am again. Where did I leave off? Oh yeah, I guess I was talking about the trompe-l'oeil. Okay, and you're going to get sick of me saying that throughout this video, but that's okay, I need to practice. Um, so, basically... Basically, without going on and on and on and on and on, it's basically just the name itself tells you what's going on. To deceive the eye. Okay? An art technique that uses realistic imagery to create the optical illusion that the depicted objects exist in three dimensions. Okay? And they go through that quite well on this, uh, in this Wikipedia article. Okay, perspective is one way to trick the eye. The Renaissance was all about perspective. All right. So it's meant to deceive people. But where does it say? I want to see in other art forms. In other art forms, forced perspective. Okay, great. Matte painting. All right. Ah, oh. fictional tempore appears in many Looney Tunes, <laughs> such as the Road Runner cartoons, where, for example, Wile E. Coyote paints a tunnel on a rock wall, and the Road Runner then races through the fake tunnel. This is usually 
followed by the coyotes foolishly trying to run through the tunnel after the roadrunner only to smash into the hard rock surface this sight gag was employed in who framed roger rabbit okay great so you know they even provide you with a list of artists who've used it examples um this is interesting this is interesting portrait of a carthusian uh, by petrus christus there's a fly near the bottom and this fly is supposed to look very realistic now if you don't know who the carthusians are or what they're about i suggest you look it up they're pretty intense they're a pretty intense monastic order and this painting was done in 1446 hmm. very very interesting um what else so you can look through these on your own murals it's a, so it, it also told us that th this is you know majorly used for murals and it's meant to fool people where is it used in films oh dear singing in the rain willy wonka and the chocolate factory indiana jones and the last crusade etc etc bewitched okay and then see also um out of the see also's i pick i picked anamorphosis for the sea also because it's a really um interesting technique all right it is a distorted projection requiring the viewer to occupy a specific vantage point use special devices or both to view a recognizable image it is used in painting photography sculpture and installation uh, toys and film special effects the word is derived from the greek prefix ana meaning back or again and the word morph meaning shape or form all right this is this is interesting and this down here uh is in holbein's painting the ambassadors it's famously employed to depict this skull i'll click on it as you can see there's this thing here and it just looks like you know what in the world is that when you're looking at it but when you look at it from a particular angle you see this skull really interesting really interesting and the question that i always have the question that i always have is why 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 you know it's it's I guess if you're an artist and doing this, it's kind of fun, right? If, you, if you've if you honed your technique to the point where you can do this well, where you can do this successfully and actually fool people, you know, that's that's very interesting. But the question for me is why? What What is it about making people think that fake things are real? Why is that so interesting? Right? Remember, I started this with wax fruit and i actually started it with the you know the scooby-doo thing worship scooby-doo how did i get from scooby-doo and the dog um mug to wax fruit that's an interesting i i made i did i make a leap or did I not in this video? I'm not sure myself. I'm not sure myself. And again, the key word, the key word, no, not there. The key word is worship. It's down here. Worship. Dog mug from Greece. Scooby-Doo dog mug worship. And do you remember wax fruit? And then we go on to deceiving the eyes. You know. What's going on? Why? Why is this so important? Again, I, I suggest you read through this Wikipedia page. I suggest you read through this Anamorphosis page. I suggest you watch my other video, the Scooby-Doo uh, video, Wax Fruit, Scooby-Doo. Um, and also art. What is art? This is all a part of art. Don't forget. This is all a part of art. 
art itself is a deception, okay? When you're looking at an image, it doesn't have to be something like, you know, like this, no. It doesn't have to be anything like, oh gosh, let's see if they have any more interesting examples. Um, Hmm. Let me see this one. The cup, okay, more food. They have bread, right? It doesn't matter what, what form it takes. The deception, it's all, it's a deception from the get-go, right? And this, it's a, de it's a deception within a deception. When, when they add this layer of this trompe l'oeil or just deceiving the eye, when they add that, and I'll go back to the thing here, still life from Pompeii, this is most likely from a mural. Again, it's depicting food. It's a deception within a deception. It's made, it's, it's done to make spaces appear bigger or, it, but, but that's not good enough for me. That explanation is not good enough for me. Why put a picture in the case of Pompeii, in this still life, a picture of what looks like, I don't know, grapes and some other kind of fruit. Maybe, I guess, look at this, pomegranates. And then this urn over here, and then this other jar with what I assume is another foodstuff in it. When there's the real thing that exists in the real world, if you if you want fruit, you can go get it. In our world, in, in the U.S. and the Western world, for the most part, you, if you want fruit, you can just go to the store and get some fruit. Or, you know, go pick some fruit off of a tree. Apples, grapes, whatever. Why do you need a picture of food? What if, if art, which this is my argument, if art itself is a form of worship, and art itself is, again, one, once again, in my opinion, a sort of a shamanistic practice where the artist, by creating an image, is conjuring something. Yes, you heard that right. That's how I feel. Then what's the point? Is it to alter reality? Is it to bend reality or the parameters of reality to the artist's will or the will of maybe not the artist's will because artists are servants maybe it's to bend reality to the will of the person who's paying the artist the patron and that goes for pompeii and even older even even older more ancient art and all the way, all the way up to now. This is how I feel. This is what I believe. Whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know. But my perspective is, I, I feel, I, c I could be wrong about this too. Just as valid as anybody else's perspective regarding these matters. Okay? So... So if we're, if art is a form of worship, that's where I started in this, this segment of this. If art is a form of worship, then when we create pictures of food, or we create fake little sculptures of food, wax fruit, wax um, donuts, cakes, pies, loaves of bread, sandwiches i don't know i don't know what is it that we're worshiping when we create either two-dimensional fake images of food including the temple technique the deceiving the eye technique so a deception within a deception or if we're creating three-dimensional images or objects in some cases, these fake fruits or fake uh, foods are extremely convincing. You can't, you, they're, they're, they're 
um, indistinguishable from the real thing. And what is the point of that? And that's kind of why I use food as for this example, because, you, again, you have the two-dimensional painting, mural, whatever, and you have these things that, if you're at a certain age, you saw in many homes throughout your youth, these bowls of wax fruit just hanging out, like I said, coffee table, kitchen table, dining room table, um, on top of the TV, usually in parts of the home that, you know, have to do with food, like the kitchen or the dining room, but uh, probably not limited to those parts of the house. So, you know, what what's going on? What is going on? I would, you know, I, I have this, my teensy-weensy little channel, but I would really love to start a discussion about this issue. This is important. <laughs> we need to figure this out because this is ruling the world. This practice and the and this this way of manipulating perception is part of the way that people are convinced to do or this, that or the other, or behave in a certain way or, or whatever. We need to we need to figure this out. We need to sit down and figure out what in the world is going on. Now, on one of my tabs, you might see. <laughs> uh, you might see where I'm kind of going with this. You know, I, no. I, I, I'm exposed to pop culture just as much as everybody else. But... I just, this this is what I googled. Okay, look at it. Chris Rock, Will Smith. And this is what came up. This is what Google spit out when I, when I, when I typed in these two names. Will Smith hyphen Chris Rock slapping incident. Okay, here we go. On March 27th, 2022, during the live television broadcast of the 94th Academy Awards, actor Will Smith walked on sl on stage and slapped comedian Chris Rock across the face as he presented the award for Best Documentary. Just before, Rock had acknowledged Smith's wife, Jada Pinkins Pinkett Smith, with a joke about her shaved head. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Should I say anything? This is, this is what Google produced when I when I googled these two names. And I mean, you know, they're relevant. This is a recent thing, you know. This happened what? Last week, something like that. A lot of people don't um a lot of people are, let's see, how, how should I, how should I put this? <clears throat> a lot of people are not suspending disbelief. A lot of people refuse to suspend disbelief regarding this incident. A lot of people are saying, hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. This is a little too, a little too much, a little too much. The, the, whoever, you know, who, whoever is um, behind it, you know, if the, 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 the people who, again, do not believe that this was an authentic event, they want answers. They're not going to get them, <laughs> please. But uh, they, they just, they're not, they're not, um, Falling for the okie doke. Anamorphosis. A distorted projection requiring, requiring the viewer to occupy a specific vantage point. Use special devices or both to view a recognizable image. It, that, that's, that's the definition that Wikipedia gives us. Now, you do realize that definitions are not set in stone, okay? And that these things can be interpreted 
in alternative ways. Yeah. Still life, Pompeii. Um, what's this one? 1874. Escaping criticism. Well, well, well. Uh, what else do we have here? Do they have any more? Yeah, they probably do have plenty of examples. Yeah, they have. They have this. And you could probably think of some examples of your own. You could probably think of some examples of your own. I'm just scrolling to, again, remind you. To remind you. <clears throat> How much of this? This one intrigues me, especially. Um, the portrait of the Carthusian. The fly. And the, the frame is engraved, so this is probably the, the original um, frame for for this painting. The fly, though, what do flies symbolize? And why does the artist, Petrus Christus, uh, why does he want to make this fly look indistinguishable from a real one to the viewer? These are questions that we have to ask. What's this? Still life with, oh dear, partridge and gauntlets. Okay, all right. Okay. To deceive the eye. To deceive the eye. What's going on? And what does it have to do with wax fruit? <laughs> and um, Scooby Doo and worship. These are my musings. Uh, <laughs> again, if I'm if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, some things I don't say all the way, because. I don't, I, maybe I feel that it goes without saying. Maybe it doesn't, but whatever. So anyway, at this point in the video, I would like to thank you for watching. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. Um, if you like what you see, please do consider uh, subscribing. Like, comment, subscribe, and share the video if you know somebody who would be interested in this kind of uh, stuff that I talk about and you know uh, next time I don't know I, I did my video about the monsters about Scooby-Doo and wax fruit uh, pool and Marianella what is art I again I don't know what to do anymore I, I have so many things I want to talk about oh ever so many things um, I think maybe maybe tomorrow I'll throw in another hunter video really short well I always say it's going to be short, but it's never short. So let me just let me just stop that. Um, uh, also, maybe next week is is Holy Week, the countdown to Easter. So I might do either this week or next week a video about um, the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris, France. I really want to do that video, and I think, you know, Holy Week, maybe I should drop it on Good Monday, because that's when the fire happened in 2019. Um, I, Holy Week is the perfect time to do that video, so I'm, I'm not just going to discuss the building itself, but, you know, you, you should know, if you've been with me for, you know, since I started in February, a couple months ago, you should know how I do by now. Um, but anyway, with all that being said, once again, thank you, and I will be, like I said, I'll be back probably tomorrow to talk at you about something. So, until then, I will go ahead and bid you bye-bye. So, bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>